Now, you know, I, I also don't think that we should be sending troops to Israel, even though it seems like that's we are, what we are on the brink of doing, um, despite the claims of both the media and the U.S. government. Carrier strike group to the Mediterranean Sea as Israel prepares to expand its Gaza operations. U.S. warship not intended to join the fighting, but their presence is designed to send a message of deterrence to Iran and Hezbollah. Make no mistake, it's only it's a sign of deterrence. They're not actually going to use those ships. No, no, the U.S. would never send some troops into an international conflict like this, would they? As of right now, the United States is giving absolutely no indication that it plans to send in U.S. military boots on the ground in any way to Israel to try and assist either in the operations uh, in Gaza or in part of any sort of hostage rescue operations. But what it's doing right now is a show of force, a show of unity with these carrier strike groups uh, sitting in the waters off the coast, a clear, very clear message to other groups in the region, uh, not even just Hamas, but Hezbollah, groups in Syria as well as a deterrence to try to keep them from getting involved. Now, we do know that the Americans have sent, have already have on the ground uh, a federal team who can help in hostage situations. They are assisting the Israelis. And there is reporting that a Marine expeditionary unit is headed potentially towards Israel. Now, this is a unit of more than 2,000 uh, Marines and sailors who not only can help in major evacuations, but they have also had training in hostage rescue scenarios. Now, no indication... So this, I think this video came out days ago, right? No troops being sent to Israel. No troops at all. No, no, no. No, no, no. We're just sending a, a boat out to scare people. And yet, we have this headline right here. Literally days later, saying that about 2,000 troops are going to deploy near Israel. Maybe not in Israel, but near Israel. Now, this is a rather quick reversal. It is indeed a quick reversal from going to no troops to some troops nearby. Um, so it de definitely seems like America will be involved in this war. <clears throat> My take on that is, first of all, Israel is our friend, right? Um, I support Israel's right to exist. I think I've said this probably too many times at this point. Um, but the problem, I think, with putting boots on the ground is, is that we're, we're just overextending ourselves. We're already involved in the war in Ukraine, right? Now we're going to get involved in this. I think one thing that we need to help our allies do is to help them fend for themselves. Israel already has more than enough military might to defeat Hamas. I think the big question is whether or not Israel can defeat Hezbollah. Now, I suspect that we will only send troops in if Hezbollah decides to attack Israel I frankly am not aware of, you know, the military might of the IDF compared to Hezbollah, but I do think it is more likely to be an even fight than Israel versus Hamas. But even then, still, right? The, our, we're, we're not supposed to be doing all of the dirty work of our allies, right? Let the allies, let our allies do what they can and defend themselves. Israel themselves have said, we don't want your troops. We, do, we want to win this war ourselves. And they most assuredly can. So I think this idea that we need to send troops over to Israel just because they're our allies, um, I think is a little bit silly. Now, I do understand the argument of what are allies for if not to help us in times of military conflict? And I think an argument could be made for that if Israel was, say, like about to lose or whatever. But Israel certainly are not the ones who are on the defensive at this point. Hamas is basically about to get pummeled and destroyed and obliterated from the face of the earth. Um, you know, so I don't think the ones that need to be scared are uh, Israel. I think it's kind of the other way around. But um, anyways, those are my, my very broad thoughts. Hopefully that's comprehensive. The long and the short of it is, you know, honestly, honestly, uh, you know, this, this war sucks and we're going to see a lot of things, um, probably even worse than what we have already seen, to be honest. Um, horrific images that I'm not even trying to look at. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think that the origins of this conflict don't matter because now it's, it's war. You can't want to complain about stolen land um, because you've declared war. So you forfeited, you know, your right to the land that you already have. Your right to your land that you already have will be determined on whether or not you win the war.
So that's my general take. I also don't think that the U.S. should really be that involved. I think we should be giving maybe some some weapons if necessary. But Israel looks like they have this well in hand, I think. It might, it might be a long war, but it looks like a war that they are most likely poised to win. So those are pretty much my thoughts. I'm sure that they are in some degree um, controversial. And so I would love to hear you guys rage in the comment section. But that's pretty much my thought. I think the last thing I want to say, though, is um, definitely pray for Israel and also pray for the Palestinians. I am by no means a hashtag free Palestine homie because I do think that Israel has a right to exist. But you know who else has a right to exist? Peaceful Palestinians. And I think that it is grossly unfair what Hamas is doing to them, even if they supported it to a degree. It's just awful to see um, so many Palestinians suffering. And this is all due to the fault of Hamas, by the way. Um, it's not even entirely the fault of the Palestinians, even the ones who voted for them and support them politically. So definitely, especially if you're religious, uh, but even if you're not, pray for the Israelis, pray for the Palestinians, and pray that the war will end quickly.